Hello comrades, I'm Ed and today I'll be looking at Metro Last Light in preparation for Metro Redux. Since 4A Games has stated that Metro Redux is just getting a graphical facelift and gameplay improvements like new melee animations and the ability to check your watch and inventory. I get the watch one, but I don't get the inventory one. Anyway, since these updates for Metro Last Light Redux are more graphic based, this review can still be a good example for what Metro Last Light Redux will be. But don't worry, once Metro Last Light Redux is out, a short review shall be released showing the new features. So on with the show. Metro Last Light is a first person shooter made by our Ukraine friends, 4A Games. And can I just say, it's good to play an FPS that isn't from America. The shooting mechanics as a whole just feel different compared to a Battlefield or COD. It's hard to explain, but it's just something you have to experience in my opinion. The story of Metro Last Light takes place one year after the events of Metro 2033. D6, the secret weapons bunker, has been civilized for the faction The Order to live in. The Order is basically the independent side of the war. The Order believes in protecting others in the Metro. They also have members in their faction called Rangers. These guys are basically the best of the best when it comes to survival both in the Metro and the surface. Antium, whom you play as, is one of the members who helped find D6 and is now a Ranger for the Order and is tormented by his actions from the last game. Some plot happens and now Antiom is on a journey to find a young Dark One. The Dark Ones are mutated creatures that can psychologically kill you. They haunt your thoughts and torment your soul. But since this is a Metro game, everything goes wrong and Antiom is sent on a journey all around the Metro and Moscow to find the Dark One. The story as a whole for Last Light is interesting, but what really draws you in is the side stories or B and C storylines. Everyone you meet or even conversations you overhear has an interesting story to tell. It's a place for everyone in this underground. Murderers, whores, tyrants, money changers, even peasants for Christ's sake. All are welcome here, even lousy actors. These stories or conversations really immerse the player in the world of Metro Last Light more than your regular FPS. Speaking of immersion, Last Light hits it on the head. When you first start playing Last Light, everything you see and hear feels believable. People are sad and depressed from the loss of their friends. People are commenting on the approaching war and seeing people repurpose objects into tools to get by everyday life really helps the player feel like they're in a post-apocalyptic world. If you want an immersive game, Metro Last Light definitely has that covered. But to sum up the story, Antium's journey through the Metro is an exciting adventure with a couple of twists and turns that the player will feel immersed in. The gameplay for Last Light is great. If you've played Metro 2033, then like me when you first played Last Light, you would have noticed how everything is more responsive and in my opinion, the stealth system actually works now. Like the last game, Antium can carry three weapons, but they are not tied to specific slots now. Once it carries your shotguns, you can do it. With the guns in particular, Last Light does well at making them feel realistic to the game's world. Take the Bastard Gun for example. It's an SMG built in the Metro that looks like a skilled craftsman could make in our time. Also, the Air Rifle is another example of a gun that feels realistic to the world of Last Light. One of the game designers even stated that the person on the team who created this gun is also an engineer. So if this gun were real, it could actually work, which is awesome to see such attention to detail in a game. The stealth system as stated is greatly improved. The light indicator is much more simplified now. On your watch, there is a small light on it. If it's on, you can be seen. If it's off, you're invisible. You can now instantly take down enemies if you sneak up on them. Throwing knives are an instant kill in stealth mode and a suppressed weapon will silently kill an enemy if you shoot them in the face. But the muzzle flash will make you visible for a split second. One thing that I really enjoyed about the stealth system is the ability to flank enemies. In a game like Splinter Cell Conviction, when you are detected then break line of sight, you see a ghost of yourself which represents where the enemies think you are. Which I guess is helpful but it doesn't feel realistic at all. In Last Light you can still do this but it doesn't give you a ghost and for some reason I now prefer that. Just being able to work out from the enemies yelling that they don't know where you are, then you slit their throats is always fun, but still feels realistic. 
There are also some more tweaks to gameplay compared to Metro 2033. Pipe bombs aren't lit manually anymore, which does suck, but Untim can throw them further now. The watch has been updated to digital, which does feel weird, but when you're not using your gas mask, Untim's watch will display the same time as your desktop clock, which is cool. The lighter can also be used independent from the notes board now. So if you're holding your gun and hit M, Antin will hold his gun with one hand and the lighter in the other. And my favorite new feature, which people got way too excited over, including myself, is the ability to wipe blood and muck off your gas mask. When that was first revealed in the E3 2012 demo, I thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. Ranger mode is basically a hardcore difficulty where old damage is increased, you can only carry limited supplies, there is no HUD or on-screen prompts, and in general, just a harder experience. Now, if you've played Metro 2033 on Ranger mode and you liked the challenge, I wouldn't recommend jumping straight into the last light on Ranger mode, mostly because the controls for the game have changed so much and since the HUD and the tutorial was disabled, actions like changing what throwables you have are hard to understand. So if you really want to play Last Light on Ranger mode, I'd recommend doing most of the tutorial first. You know the tutorial is over once you reach the theater or when you reach the surface for the second time. Now about the whole having to buy Ranger mode. Since I pre-ordered the game before it came out and I'm a bit of a fanboy when it comes to the Metro series, the whole pay for something that should have been in the game didn't really affect me, but I do agree that it was wrong for our games and THQ at the time to cut content out of the game then sell it at a price. With Last Light Redux though, you will get Ranger Mode plus the DLC. So if you didn't want to play Last Light because of that reason, then Redux will come with Ranger Mode built in. But to summarize, Last Light's gameplay is another aspect of the game it does right to continue immersing the players in the world. The presentation of Last Light is breathtaking. This review was done on PC and man does Last Light look great. The colors, the harsh contrast between light and dark is amazing to look at and intense to be in when your torch doesn't work. The scenery as well for the game really immersed me into the world of Last Light and seeing what survivors repurpose normal objects into was interesting, like in the station Venice. Because of the melting snow from the surface, the station is flooded so everything has this slight verticality to it, and rail cars have been converted into fishermen boats. Little things like this really helps the player believe the world of Metro Last Light. The sound of Last Light is impeccable. Sound can make a flat image suddenly have a character, a feeling, and emotions, and sound in Last Light is used so well, from both a realistic standpoint and creative standpoint. For example, dirty bullets sound like crap whilst firing, but when you fire military grade bullets, they sound big and loud. Pipe bombs echo through the tunnel when they explode, the creaking of pipes and the air whistling through the air adds an extra layer of tension on top of Last Light. Before this review concludes, I do have a couple of negatives I want to get off my chest. These are more personal opinions than objective facts, so they should be taken with a grain of salt. The how I described forced love story really felt out of place in Metro Last Light. This is a game about war, survival, humanity, death, and what happens when the wrong choice is made. But there's always time for sexual tension and love interest in the world of Metro, it seems. The love story between Antium and Anna could have been done better if it had been more subtle about it. Also, why would you have intercourse in a medical bay with see-through sheets around it? Also, there is a dying child and father in the adjacent medical bay. Come on, what's next? Having a bath on the surface in acid? Okay, I am getting a little overboard about a minute thing. Metro Last Light is a great example of a sequel done right that can immerse the players in such a believable world. With the added and expanded gameplay features, you will truly feel like a ranger trying to survive the apocalypse. Be sure to keep a lookout for the current state of Metro Last Light where we'll be taking a look at the DLC packs for the game. Keep your pants on, folks.